So we've finally kicked off and we're starting to dig some trenches for the footings. And I think here, I think I'll find some money on the ground. Bonus. And here Rowdy and I are digging around the old stumps so that when the new slab gets poured, both buildings will be tied in together. That way, if there's any movement, they'll both move at the same rate. And here the excavator is digging along our boundary line, which is going to be our garage wall. And it's at times like this, when the ground is muddy and wet and sloppy and space is tight, that a good operator is worth his weight in gold. And check out this guy on the shovel. What a machine! Look at him go! And here we're about to shoot a movie. So come on fellas over here, that's it. Move here, move there. Chop, chop, come on, time's money. Let's go. And how's that for a beautiful straight trench? Woohoohoo! You gotta love that. Beautiful. And here's a close up just in case the kids are watching. Woohoo! Machinery. Ask Dad, he might even buy you one. Please, Dad, can I have a digger? Please, Dad, come on, Dad, please. I can't believe it. We finally had a break in the weather, and as a result, the boys could come in and dig the trenches for the foundations. They had a decent crack at it and got it all done. Happy days. Well done, lads. And as I say that, I can feel raindrops. You have got to be kidding me. So hopefully tomorrow, if the weather holds out, we'll be forming up for the slab. Now I'm looking forward to this bit because once the boxing's all done, you can actually see how the job's going to look. Should be good. The rain's held off for a bit, so the boys have decided to come back and install some of the formwork. Now the first thing they do is put in a series of pegs and coming up you'll see that after those pegs have been banged in to a string line then they'll attach this red plank and the red plank is the formwork. Now the top of that red plank is also going to be the top of our slab and that's about 170 millimeters down from the original flooring in the old house. So the concreters have set up their basic formwork. They had to go because of the rain, but this gives the plumber a chance to run some string lines off that formwork so we know exactly where to put our plumbing pipes. Now these string lines actually represent where the wall frame is going to sit. And it's a good thing to know, especially if you intend to hang things like a wall hung vanity in your bathroom, because the pipe work sits inside that frame. And if the frame's out, your pipes aren't going to work. And it's also a good idea to know where your intersections are, that way you can measure back for your shower and your floor waste to work tiles, and also to find out the position of your bath waste and your toilet waste. It's a good thing to know. Now, as soon as the plumber's finished putting in his pipe work, then the concreters come back and they'll lay down some crusher dust, form up for the slab, then they'll put down their steel. The electrician will then come back, put in some conduit for our kitchen island bench, and then the termite guys will come in and put their caps on our penetrations. Once all that's done, then the slab's ready to go. So what we need to get sorted out is all the plumbing for the ensuite, bathroom, toilets, laundry, and kitchen. And here we're just digging a few trenches for our pipe work. Now Mark can be seen marking out the position of the shower outlet for the ensuite. He then covers that pipe work with a bit of sand so the concreters don't dislodge it with their crusher dust and steel work. Now he can be seen just marking out a couple of toilets that are coming off the old building and now finishing off the second bathroom. Works fast, doesn't he? So after a pretty big day, the plumbing is now in place. And it turned out fantastic thanks to Mark Passmore from Passmore Plumbing. Well done, mate. Now, all we need to do is to sit tight and wait for the concreters to turn up. Come on, fellas. Chop, chop. <sighs> Ha <laughs> ha.
hang on a sec. This is looking a little serious. The boys have turned up, they've finished off the boxing, and now they're putting down a layer of crusher dust. Now, crusher dust is put down in pads, which are separated by beams or trenches. And they level these pads off to a height of 100 millimeters or four inches below the top of the slab. So the slab itself finishes up being at 100 millimeters or four inches thick. Now here's another load of crusher dust coming in and the boys are back into it. Now, have you ever seen a bunch of concreters move so fast? They're machines. Well done, fellas. It's no wonder I hired you. Keep up the good work, boys. Well, after all that hard work, I think it's time we take a break and we'll come back shortly with the final in my prepping and pouring a slab series. And a big thank you to the boys from Ray Ellicott Concreting. And I'll leave a link to Ray's details in the description box below. So make sure you check those guys out. Alrighty, as per usual, big thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. <coughs> I'm as dry as a dead dingo's donger. I think I need a cup of tea. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.